second lesson. Okay, 101.1. So the last lesson, we talked about how the dots indicate the notes and whether or not that dot is on a line or a space. And along a whole bunch of lines and spaces like this tells us can tell us which note is which. So we need a lot more information to figure out which note they're talking about on, the, on a keyboard or a violin or a bassoon or what have you, okay? So, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of lines all written out now, and here's my almost middle of the line, okay? So, for now, we're going to call that C. Okay, so here's my C, okay? And I can keep going up, right? This space note now can be D, E, F, G, and then after G, remember, we don't know why yet, but after G comes A again, C, C, D, E, F, G, and then one more line of A, right? And I can do a note on top, too, and that can be my G, right? And now going down, I have to go backwards, right? That's why musicians always know our alphabet forward and backwards, but only up to G, right? So we have C. I mean, some musicians might know forwards and backwards the whole way. I do not. Uh, C, B, A. Okay, so we have all of this information, but we don't have anything to tell it. Like, this is a lot, right? So to try to digest this and say, okay, this is the C, but which C is it, right? I've got a bunch of Cs on a keyboard. I see a whole bunch of Cs here. This is a lot to try to take in when you're looking at these notes. So we're going to simplify things a little bit. They have made a rule, right? So this, the staff is going to be five lines and four spaces. So I'm going to take these lines. One, two, one, two, three, four, two, five. Okay. I'm going to skip this C line and I'm going to say I have another set of lines and spaces. The lines I have to have five. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So I've skipped this line. I'm erasing that line. I'm going to keep my C, but I'm going to erase that line. So here, I get to keep my C, and I keep a little line to remind me that it's a line and a space. Okay, so there's my C with a little line here. And I'm going to get rid of this line, too, because it's just too much to try to read at once. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this line. Now I'm going to keep the letters. Oh, what color is my next G that I have already erased? Oops, oops, let me do my thing. Okay, so now, and I have these five. So, and now I'm going to count up and I see, all right, I have a G here, I have an E, a middle one's a B. I can choose, well, back then they could choose any symbol they wanted to, to say that this was this set of lines and spaces. Because you can see, this bottom line is going to be an E, this bottom line is a G, right? They're different because we started with something and started taking stuff away. Okay, they look the same now because we changed it. So, I'm going to put my treble clef, all right? Now, way back when, they thought a treble clef looked like a really fancy G. You might not see it, but the G right, is supposed to be right here, and X marks the spot right where the line meets right there. That's my G. So, that's why we call this a G clef. Right? And see, it's on the higher part. So you'll also hear people call this a minor. Okay? Now down here, I need a special symbol that can tell me what's going on down here. Right? And that's where you get this fancy looking guy. Okay? And if you can see where I put the two dots, right? It almost looks like a super fancy F. And there, the two dots are in between the so that's our F clef, or we also call it a bass clef because it's the lower part and it's for all the low notes, right? Yeah. So now 
this is starting to look like something that you see on your music. If you play an instrument that focuses just on the higher notes, it might not feel like the higher notes to you because you're playing the instrument, but it's just higher compared to other instruments. So you would be reading the higher sound, like the treble bar. If you play an instrument that is mostly the low notes, you're going to read the bass bar, right? You're only going to read the notes that have the symbol in between. If you play piano, right, and you have lots of different notes that are, in the grand scheme of things, easier to make a sound out of than other instruments because we can use all ten fingers, you're going to use both, right? That's why piano players read both staves, right? And one for each hand, and we would call that the grand staff for you. Okay, so we have these higher notes and lower notes. One last little bit of information. So you may have heard in your music classes the different phrases we use to help remember which note is which. Right? Those are just like those are just things that help us remember based on the rules that I laid out for you already. Right? So in the treble clef, right, the space notes, F, A. They spell the word bass, right? So we have bass, right? And then some people will use different phrases for the E, G, A, D, F. I like every good boy deserves fudge. People use all different kinds of phrases. You can sh uh, share yours on the bottom of whatever phrase you like, because I like having lots of different ones, different phrases stick with different people, right? The bass clef, we have our A, C, E, so all cows eat grass is the one that I like to use. And our G, B, D, F, and A. I like George Bush drives fast always, but that just probably just shows my age. Um, but other students have, have told me other phrases, so please share all your different phrases that you've heard because it could be really helpful to somebody who needs something to help them help it stick in their mind. And what I always tell my students, D, C, and D, you kind of just have to memorize what they look like, right? C is the one that's always hanging out below the staff or right above the staff, depending on what instrument you're playing. D is stuck like a piece of gum at the bottom of the treble clef. And your B is always going to be the one that sits on top and it's going to like hold the duck on the top of the water. Okay? All right. I hope you found this helpful. And I'll be having more worksheets that I'll put links to so you can practice, right? We'll just put some notes. Ooh, what note is that? Oh, it's a B. What is this? An F. What's this one? A C. So you can write the name of the note because it takes practice, practice, practice. Remember, when you learned how to read, when you learned when you learned how to read letters, you had to learn way more symbols than this, and it took a while, right? You had to practice, 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 and it was several years before you were reading really smoothly and really well. So it takes that same amount of practice to be able to read music really smoothly. But you got to start somewhere. So start with those worksheets, okay? All right, see you later.